October 10th, 1991. the genius behind the Beach Boys, who nearly destroyed himself with drugs. I burned my brain out. My brain got burned out. Now the Beach Boys say Wilson was saved, only to become a victim of another kind. Brian is the goose that laid the golden egg. Tonight, the story of Brian Wilson and his therapist, a man who's been paid a fortune, who lives in Wilson's house, has moved in on his music, and has even cut himself into virtually every deal Wilson makes. Members of your profession say, how could he, how could he do that? That is the very thing we are pledged not to do. He's the provocative Pulitzer Prize winning author who's crammed five lifetimes into one. Hard drinking, hard fighting, debauchery of almost every kind. Norman Mailer on women's liberation. Now I realize that uh, indeed and in fact, women are just as loud. Prime time. From New York, Diane Sawyer. Good evening. For a generation now, the Beach Boys have been America's band. And their creator, Brian Wilson, our homegrown genius, before his world collapsed from drugs and mental illness, Brian Wilson wrote harmonies so sweet, so complex and ahead of their time. Paul McCartney said once, he inspired the Beatles' best work. And now, next month, Brian Wilson's family is going to court to file something called a petition for conservatorship. They want the court to order Wilson's therapist manager out of his life and give them control over Brian and his money. Wilson opposes it, but the family says the sometimes bit worried man you're about to meet isn't like the real Brian they know. And they're convinced that his problem now isn't illness, it's the cure. <laughs> never be that innocent again. The way we were when a sweet-faced boy named Brian Wilson and his Beach Boys sang our coming-of-age fantasies. Let's go surfing now, everybody's learning how, come on a safari with me. boys were family from the right cousin Mike Love, Brian, his brother Carl, and best friend Al Jardine, and on the drums, another brother, Dennis. It doesn't matter that Dennis Wilson was the only one who could actually surf. The Beach Boys were riding a wave of exuberance, optimism in the country, all the way to hit after hit. Over the years, they would sell about 100 million records. The only problem was, the kid who had been making all that music felt he was going under. In 1964, just two years after the first big record contract, Brian Wilson had a nervous breakdown. The fires, the of the wine, the dim light At 22, he was too young and too fragile for the pressure of writing, producing, performing. And it was too easy to turn to drugs. Pot, LSD, uppers, cocaine, even heroin. A broken man to to throw. I burned my brain out. My brain got burned out, and I had nothing left of my brain, you know? You really think I it, turned into it was... a vegetable over drugs, yeah. A lot of brain damage. Real lot of brain damage. And every day of my life, I pay a little dues because of the drugs I took. In painful contrast to his music, Wilson continued his downward spiral. By 1981, he had ballooned to over 300 pounds. He refused to shower and hid in his bed for two years. What were you afraid of? I was afraid that the devil came in the form of other people that were competing with me, that had ideas of, of killing me and getting rid of me. And you thought it was everywhere, in the shower head? Yes, the shower head, everywhere I looked, I would say, yeah, the devil's after me. Does it come back sometimes? Yeah, too? it does. It comes back to haunt me every maybe three weeks to a month. 
Brian Wilson is a perfect example of the fact that in my field, I'm an artist. This man says he's the reason Brian Wilson functions today at all. In 1983, at the family's request, Dr. Eugene Landy placed Wilson under therapy. His highly unorthodox therapy, a kind of boot camp, 24-hour supervision, diet control, exercise. He forced Wilson to confront the agony of his childhood, memories of a hectoring, abusive father. He beat the hell out of me all the time. He hurt me deeply. Whatever Landy's method, his program worked. Brian Wilson before, Brian Wilson after. Did Dr. Landy save your life? Absolutely. Yes, he did. But success had a price, an astronomical price. The bills came in, $50,000 for vitamins, $25,000 for Landy's out-of-pocket expenses for four days in Hawaii. At one point, Landy's fees and extra charges were running well over $1 million a year. <laughs> To offset Landy's fees, the Beach Boys donated an extra concert a month. I think Landy thinks that Brian is the goose that laid the golden egg. Lead singer Mike Love, who co-wrote a lot of hits with Brian Wilson, back before Landy came along. He said he'd be there a year to year and a half. Well, when it got to be about five years, <laughs> we realized that, that he has no intention of ever leaving Brian on his own. It's now nine years, and the family says the entire time, the sweet and loving Brian they knew has been elated, virtually held a prisoner by Landy, and poisoned against them. I find them to be uh, 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 very s people that are very sick. I mean, you know, I mean, they, I just, I just have, I have, I have some, I have some pity for them. They have said that they think you're in a kind of prison. Well, life is a prison in itself, not just. The Dr. Lent, not just the not just the Dr. Landy program, but there's everybody has to have a little imprisonment in order to to understand that uh, you know that this is where we are. I mean, you know. We saw where Brian Wilson has been all these years. A world where he can almost never see outsiders alone. One, two, three. When he four, does see other people, five, Landy or one of his handpicked aides is almost always watching. Here's one of them recording us the entire time on videotape. And it's not just us. It happened to the Beach Boys, too. We don't have access to them without Landy's supervision, videotaping, uh, recording. Everything has gone to hell between me and the Beach Boys. Totally gone to hell. When other old friends tried to call, they couldn't get through the wall put up by Landy either. Dean Tora, group Jan and Dean. I, I tried maybe... 8, 10, 15 times. Do you never call you? No. Not in all these years? We have no ongoing relationship. No. Your daughters? Would you my like daughter? to see your daughters? Yeah. I think my daughters are kind of off on a career. Wendy Wilson and Carney Wilson now have three number one records of their own, as two-thirds of the group Wilson Phillips. They told us how much they love their father and that they miss him, but they have been shut out too. You proud of them? I'm very proud of my daughters. I think my daughters are probably two of the most special girls ever created. Why don't you see them? Why don't I see them? Well, I, gosh, you know, I, I, that's a hard question. I, I can't answer that question. Uh, I'm guilty for not being a good father. I was a druggie when I should have been a father. Can you go tell them that? Well, I could. I could. Think so, you might? No, I don't think I could. I'm going to. I was just, I've been, I've been, I've been waiting right time to call them. 